Hey, you ever thought of going back down the trail with old Cookie in the 1880s and the 1890s? Well, folks, if you'll crawl up in that seat with me there on that wagon, I'm gonna give you a free trip. We're gonna talk about then, we're gonna talk about now, and it's all about feeding cowboys. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by camp. And woo, when we're talking about camp, this is probably my most favorite place in the world to cook. Yeah, and cooking on ranches is where I sort of got to where I found my niche in life, I think, because I've always wanted to cook and always did. But when I could start cooking for cowboys, whoo, one of the best things ever it was. And I still get them questions on YouTube. Did you really cook for cowboys going down the cattle drive trail? Now we're gonna answer that in a minute because we still cook for cowboys, but it's a little different than when it was going down the trail. Do you actually stay on working ranches in a teepee out there in the middle of nowhere? Yep, we sure do. So I'm just gonna walk you through a day in the life of a camp cook, how it starts, how it ends, and what all I get to see in between. So how did I get my start in this ranch cooking business that I must be in? Well, I always sort of had to hanker into cooking. My mother started me cooking when I was probably seven, eight years old. I can remember standing on a stool in there in the kitchen watching her make stuff and think it was the grandest thing ever. Now I got to make me a chocolate cake when I was eight years old and whoo wee, that thing was so good and I got to mix it in that little old bowl and lick the batter. But folks, if I'd have known I was gonna have to wash them dishes at the time, I might have went into being an astronaut or something like that. Washing dishes goes with cooking and whoo, I have done a bunch of them. From that, we went to cooking for some elk hunters in the early 80s in the Gila wilderness. Now, sort of like ranch cooking, you just packed it in on a mule instead of a wagon and we'd be cooking anywhere from 7,000 foot elevation to 12,000 foot elevation, which makes a huge difference. But when I got out of there on the long drive home from Silver City, New Mexico that year, I thought, you know, I'm gonna buy me a wagon and I'm gonna go back to my heritage, back to them ranchers, them folks that I used to sometimes work for but now I was gonna see if they needed a cook. Now, when you start out in that business, and let me tell you folks, it is a business that is, oh, I'd say 19 hours a day sometime, and the pay, oh my gosh, we got rich. We'll talk about that here in a minute, we will. So I put the word out on the cowboy grape fry. It wasn't none of this tick tocky uh, Insta chat stuff, none of that. It was by word of mouth and a full stomach. And really the Cowboy Circle is pretty good to get around. It'll take you from South Texas all the way up in Montana, back around through New Mexico and into the Texas Panhandle, and then back to my house. And it wasn't long before the people called. They said, hey, we need a ranch cook. But can you drive a team? So I hired on my first ranch back in about 1992, I did. It was down there by Abilene, Silverbrook Ranch. And what? Staying in there three weeks. Let's just start from that coffee bowl and then sort of back up just a minute and get in that old teepee that we had for so many times on the ranch. We got them cowboy condominiums, we do. Yeah, I mean, it was right next to the Double Tree and the Hilton and the Holiday Inn American Express and all that stuff was sitting out there right in the middle of this 500,000 acres. Really, it's just a canvas teepee that is supported by two poles on an A-frame. Now they make them in different sizes from seven by seven to 12 by 12s with two foot walls. Now I spent many a night in a seven by seven teepee when it was just me and they never was tall enough for you to get dressed or undressed in. So you always had to do that outside and then crawl in there and go to bed. But folks, they was pretty well airtight. They kept the water off your back most nights and you'd unzip that door, usually 2.45 to three o'clock every morning, make the short commute to work, you would which is usually 50 yards at the most to the wagon, that old stove of mine named Bertha, and a lot of firewood. Stoke that old stove we would, the coffee's been put on, guess what comes next, folks, you gotta do it every day. That's make homemade bread. Wasn't no Wackums here. I said, we're making sourdough biscuits or we're making buttermilk biscuits, but you gotta have them. It's gotta be what's in the pot. Give them time to double in size and maybe rise up just a little. And then you're thinking, what time are we serving breakfast? Well, a lot of times on ranches, it was between 4.30 and 5.30, just depending on where you was at and what season it was, spring or fall. Now, most of the time, cowboys hear you clattering around over there. They ain't gonna come at four o'clock, but they might be over there at 4.15 because there is this aroma 
that's floating down through the camp and them 13 other teepees that scattered out there across in the moonlight. And what is it? The smell of coffee and mesquite smoke has brought life to the members of the other family it has. And you hear them as they come up through there sort of jingling them spurs around, but also there's a little conversation. Pretty light, pretty quiet, because they know when they get to my kitchen, it's sort of like sacred ground. Nobody is really welcome in there until you ask. Now that's laws that I didn't make. That's laws that old Cookie made so many years, years ago going down the trail. And them cowboys knew they come up there, they'd always ask, can we come under the fly of the wagon, Kent? And you're talking, what fly of the wagon? Big tarp that goes over the entire camp there, covers everybody up, got snap-in walls when it's cold, and there's benches all the way around. Now they'll get them a coffee cup and they'll pour them a cup, pour their buddy a cup and they'll sit there while I'm beginning to finish up on the breakfast side of things. Now, we're either gonna have bacon or we're gonna have sausage. Sometimes we might even have some leftover steak that we're gonna throw back in there from the night before. And what are we talking? Cackleberries. I'm talking a bunch of them cackleberries. Take a 20 inch skillet, throw it up there on Old Bertha, let it get warm, crack you about three dozen eggs up in there. Now as we gather all around and them boys know it's nearly time to eat, but they know what's fitting to happen next. We all take off our hats, we bow our heads, and we pray. And we give thanks to God for what we have and the food we get and this beautiful creation and this beautiful job that we get to do because we never take that part for granted. So the meal is blessed and the plates are filled. Soon it won't be long and the bellies will be full. They will. And them boys will sit around for just a second and then you'll hear this question. Who jingled horses up last night? Now that's a term there on a ranch or a cowboy might use to who gathered up the remuda of the horses the night before? And a remuda, that is a band of horses that we have took in with us. Maybe it's through a three week period or a five week period. Now whose camp you're on, depending on who's running that part of the ranch, is the first man in the set of them pins. And what's he gonna do? Rope out a mount. Everybody will call out, I'm riding this, I'm riding that. The best story I ever heard in my life was a young kid hollered out, I'm riding SpongeBob. And there was an old fella out there that was slinging the rope to rope he was. And he said, what the hell does a SpongeBob look like? And it was this old paint coat that this kid had brought in there. But we didn't know who SpongeBob was at the time. But we found out later and we laughed about that for a long time. But each, he ropes out a mount for each one of them. That mount is caught, brought to that cowboy. He puts his bridle on, takes him over there out of the way till he gets all of them mounted. It's time to go out and do what? bovine battle due to the day and you see them right out single file a lot of times that old moonlight be shining on them like a beacon i mean and you can just hear the the hoof beats and you can see the dust sort of there in the distance and then they go over hill and they're gone so time to wash them dishes it is got them fed and got them on their way wash them dishes pull up a chair sit there by old bertha a minute and think about I am the most blessed man in America right now because I'm getting to do what I was meant to do and something that I love to do. But then it come that time. What was it? What are you going to fix for lunch? I make a menu, I do, and a grocery list for how long I'm going to stay in. And I usually pat it three or four days because you never know what's going to happen because Mother Nature is in charge. Now, as I'm thinking about what I'm going to fix for them cowboys for lunch, I remember being on the other side, horseback and what them fellers was doing out there. They may have been in a 15,000 acre pasture setting up a drive where a, a man will come through out there. he be the man that most of the time runs that camp and he'll drop a rider off. You start here and they'll make sort of a half moon circle all the way around. And they'll holler when everybody begins to take off and you push that drive around and bring it to a set of pins. Get them in there, they go to separating cows from calves, stripping the bulls off, putting them somewhere else. And by that time, it's usually getting pretty close to, I'd say, time to go ahead and fix that lunch. I've been gazing out the kitchen window too long. So a lot of times, first day in on a working ranch, and I've done this for a long time, baked bean casserole. I mean, them cowboys love it, and it's so easy to prepare. The recipe is in our cookbook, Taste the Cowboy. And we have fixed it many a time, cowboy approved it is. Fry you some taters up along with that, make you some sourdough cornbread, but you gotta have dessert. Every day has some kind of bread and some kind of dessert. Because I'm here to spoil cowboys. 
That's what I do. And I feed them better than anybody else is going to feed them. Now, I have 12 o'clock on my waterberry, but a cow don't own a watch. She don't care what time it is. She don't care what day it is. She don't care what year it is. There comes a certain time when, hey, we got the cows stripped from the calves. It'd be a good time to break. Go up there and see old Kent and let's get our bellies full. Now, most of the time, a noon meal for cowboys, they're not going to eat as much as they would a breakfast meal or a night meal unless their day is pretty short after lunch. But most of the time, they're going to put in a full one. They are. So they come in. We bless the meal. They eat. They tell me about the horse wrecks they've seen, how bad somebody got bucked off, or hey, how come did you let that cow get by you? Didn't you see that cow? And I'll hear them laugh, and that's what I like. I know they're happy. And as they come back, back up there, bringing them empty dishes, and they put them in a wreck pan, which is a wash tub. One has hot soapy water, hot rinse water. They'll scrape that plate clean if they ain't licked it clean, set it in that hot water, and say, thank you, Kent for another great meal. And as they go off down there towards the set of pens where they've been working, I watch them and they're all smiling. They're all happy. And they just sort of go out of sight again, go down a big old long hill. And then all I hear after that is bellering. Cows bellering up a storm, I mean. So the cows and the calves are stripped off. Now they got a brand, they got a vaccinate, they got a dehorn, and they got a castrate. And all this is done pretty quick when you've got some good ropers in a set of pins, it is. Then everything pairs back up, set it out there, let it settle a minute, go back to the home place where they was before. Now, as they begin to come back up to camp, my work has started about three o'clock that afternoon because I'm gonna try to have supper around six to 6.30. And folks, supper time, we do put on a feed like any smorgasbord you ever seen in your life. Because tonight, what are we having? We're having a big old 16 ounce bone in ribeye, we are with some sparkling taters, some hominy and green chili casserole, and what? A double-decker red velvet cake, but also some homemade sourdough biscuits. Now them boys has come up there, they've took them boots off, put on them shut-up dogs on their feet. What are them? The comfortable shoes. You don't hear them dogs barking no more. And they get their belly full. They do. Dishes is washed. I tell cowboys, sorry to clean y'all out of camp, but old Cookie gotta go to bed. That's eight to 8.30. Now, they respect me, they do, and their teepees are a long way from that wagon because they know I want it quiet. Get over in that teepee, get in that bedroll, pass out just quick as I can because the day's going to start again at 2.45. Now, you never know what tomorrow's going to bring when you're on a ranch. Like I say, you can go to bed and it'd be 45 degrees. Wake up the next morning, it'd be 5. Wind blowing 60 miles an hour. I can remember breaking ice out of a solid frozen water barrel to make coffee. So let's talk about some of them conditions I've cooked in. The worst conditions ever always involve the wind because the wind can just tear up so much stuff. It's two places, Paladere Canyon, back in December one year, minus 10 wind blowing about 35, about 12 inches of snow on the ground. It was not pleasant. We had moved camp 19 degrees, it was just right. Got up the next morning, tore my fly plumb off the wagon. So what I need to do, I gotta sew it back up so I can get the walls around it so I can have a place to cook for them cowboys, but also keep them comfortable. Well, the first night I rolled up that bedroll right there beside old Bertha without nothing on top of me. No tarp, no nothing. I like to froze to death. It's three below zero that next morning. Now a good buddy of mine, old Chris Morton, he was most gracious to ask me the next night why don't you pull in here at this teepee with me and you can sleep? I said, I'll do it, buddy. I've been about to freeze. So I go in there, get ready to go to bed. Now, before that we went to bed, I'd wash dishes that night, rolled up the sleeves of my shirt there a little so I didn't get them sweat. When I took that shirt off that night and just laid it over in the floor, what water was on there froze. The sleeves was froze to the elbows. When I put them on the next morning, and Chris, he don't hear well all the time. I said, my gosh, I got ice. He said, lice? He said, you got to get out of my teepee now. I know why nobody lets you sleep with them. I said, no, Chris Morton, you don't understand. It's ice from washing dishes. But I remember getting that sewed up and getting camp stood back up that day. It was just two days of hard sewing, and I didn't miss a meal. I would cook breakfast. I'd cook lunch. I'd cook supper. I'd sew in between. But the other place that probably shocked me and Shan as many, many places that we cooked on was up near Casper, Wyoming, the Poison Spider Ranch. 
beautiful day, no wind. Supper fixed, washing dishes, and it hit out of the west. Not a cloud in the sky. 75 mile an hour, straight line winds. Ripped the fly of that wagon to shreds, blowed over teepees. It was a nightmare that happened, it wasn't even dark. And it blowed like that all night long. So you, you never know what you're gonna get from Mother Nature, but she's gonna give it to you most time in full force. Now let's talk about the difference that old Cookie going down the trail in the 1880s had and what I got now. Now, I think we should talk about the similarities first. He had a wagon and a team. So did I. He had Dutch oven, skillets, coffee pots. So do I. He had coffee, flour, sugar, uh, beans, maybe some jerky, a little bit of dried fruit, onions, peppers, and a little bit of lard. That's about it. Me, I had everything that I could tote into one of them ranches too. I mean, I'd have it all. But I had a little more means and opportunity to keep it and to have it accessible. And folks, that's what it's about, is trying to bring a meal together for them cowboys that they didn't even think you might could put together out there in the middle of nowhere. But old Cookie did his job too. Them boys would get up every morning, beans, biscuits, and coffee. Hey, wasn't nothing wrong with it. Cause at supper, guess what? It's a good, we're gonna have it again. Now, there was no noon meal that Cookie fed in between because remember they're on a cattle drive that maybe started out down by old San Antonio and ended all the way up in the middle of Kansas put them on a railhead, ship them somewhere. Us, a little different today. We're working usually a pasture at a time. Them cowboys can come in for lunch. Now when we're moving camp, say we're gonna move camp early every morning after breakfast, we usually make breakfast burritos or me and Shan will make a sloppy joe or we'll make something and it's like a drive up window by the wagon. Them cowboys will come by and get them a sandwich and just peel right off. We keep them fed, get to camp, set up, start over but we weren't doing that every, every day. And we weren't taking ball and longhorns from South Texas to the middle of Kansas. Trucking has really come in and helped the industry in so many ways that you can load cattle, take them to a feedlot, or you can trailer cattle from one part of the ranch to another, and you're not spending two days driving them somewhere. So sure, me and old Cookie got the same job. He was a doctor, I've been a doctor. He was a dentist, yeah, I've been a barber. We had to do what was needed to be done. And that was cook and take care of a bunch of cowboys and be the luckiest man in the world to do it. One other question I get a lot from people is, do you take a bath ever? If it's like a springtime ranch, I'm gonna take a bath every night. I used to hang a five gallon bucket up in a tree that had a vegetable sprayer hose on it. The sun would warm that old black bucket during the day I could go over there and take me a shower. It was the best thing ever. Then Shan modernized that, she did. She got one that run off a battery and it nearly knocked the hair off your head. It was so much powerful, it was. But yeah, wash tub, got a pitcher, some soap, a towel. You can take a bath, it is good as gold. But folks, as days come to an end out there and nightfall begins to come along there, the curtain is being drawn and we're gonna start what? The nighttime symphony that I love to hear. I'm talking about that old cow, sitting out there on a hill so far away, singing to a mate. And you just hear it soft there in the distance. The old hoot owl after that. Then you hear the crickets, and it just starts. And it's sort of like music to your ears. And if you can get really lucky, and the good Lord blesses you, you get that light sprinkling of rain during the night that just floats so gentle and easy on that teepee. It's the best sleep music you ever found in your life. I take my hat off when I go in that TP before my eyes shut every night. I say, thank you, Lord, for making me a cowboy, and thank you, Lord, for making me a cook, because that's what we love to do. We hope you enjoyed this little life and times in the day of a camp cook, because, hey, we've enjoyed bringing it to you. Hope we answered some of your questions. Be sure and share this with all your folks and the neighbors. Give us a like. But as always, and it is with great privilege and honor, I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and all the veterans that have kept that old flag flying. But there's more folks I want to thank too. 
Everybody that's fighting this COVID deal again, all the nurses, the ER rooms, the people that are staffing things, everybody that's trying to get product to us back and forth up the road, the truck drivers, because folks, we have so many truck drivers that watch us. They use our recipes in a little crock pot in a truck and they cook them and we are proud to be part of them, we are. So to each and every one of you out there that's doing a service to the community, hey, we thank you so much for it. Now the rest of you, Come on up in here. There ain't no dancing today. Uh-uh. I just don't know what it would be because I didn't have no bite of food, so don't be too. I don't even know where my pups are. Everybody has left today. Shan, thank you so much, darling, for loving me and always making me look better than I do. God bless you each and every one, and we hope we took you down the life and the trail today. If you like the historical aspect of the cowboy lifestyle and cooking on ranches, you might enjoy one of our very first videos we did, Spring Works on the Bell Ranch. And also one of my favorite videos that we ever did was Sounds of a Cow Camp. It is something to hear.